M and A and activism. Any any thoughts on that? Well, I, 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 as somebody who lives in, in the world of M and A and activism, and then when those two worlds collide, which is increasingly uh, frequent these days, anytime you have a deal, expect somebody to pop up and say <laughs> no. It's just, and maybe it's just my world uh, recently, but um, you know, we just we just went through um, with Chris's team the um, the, the vote at, at Magellan Midstream, where you know a, th a three or four percent shareholder popped up. Um, you know, I would say this year I've probably done about 10 of them, and that's probably the total of what I've done in the last seven or eight years. So it's just, you know, e either because an activist really wants, doesn't think this deal makes strategic sense, but a lot of it's just what you call bump where they're just trying to yeah. get a little more money out of them. And that's, um, so I think if you've got a deal, just be prepared for, for somebody to pop their head up and say no. There's a whole generation of activists who made their name, they made their bones 10 to 15 years ago. I leave Icon aside because he's been doing it longer than I've been alive. And you could leave Nelson Peltz out of this for the same reason. But Ackman, uh, Loeb, um, Greenlight Capital, a lot of those guys, they built up what it is that we think of shareholder activism now. What they're doing was something that the Raiders were doing before them and the proxy tiers in the 50s. That's not new. But this buy part, buy part of the company and then pretend that you are the representative of 100% of the shares and you see things. Those guys were really good at it, uh, Jeff Ubbin. They were really good at it to the point where they didn't need to run contests anymore. And now, I mean, a lot of them are still younger than me, but Ackman, Ackman has effectively retired from that. He said he's retired, but you look at what he's done. He's not running proxy contests, although I think he probably still is badgering people in the background. Jeff Ubbin left uh, Value Act. He started up his own you know, successor firm, but the successor firm is a kinder, gentler kind of activist that doesn't run proxy fights and focuses narrowly on some things. Um, Elliot's still out there. Elliot is a, it's the only one that's truly corporate where they, for one thing, they hedge every one of their investments and another thing is they have organization within there. It's not the, it, it, Paul Singer does not run these things. Uh, the portfolio manager who's upset they can't get change works with the team that actually really focuses on developing the decks and everything else. They don't run many proxy fights because they actually put in the work and they present something that probably looks pretty good. When they're wrong or when it doesn't look that good side the company, you see it. I think we're going to see it at NRG in the spring because there's no room to settle in between. And they've already the two. talked to all the big shareholders, yeah. and they know they've got the, the the backing. But no one. So the the guys who ten or fifteen years ago were making their bones, a lot of those have stepped out of it. Icon and Pelts are. Look, they're in their 80s. They're not buying ripe bananas. They're not going to be doing this a whole lot longer. Um, you're kind of left with a lot of the ankle biters, and the ankle biter, meaning they didn't have much AUM. Not that they couldn't be loud, and but they're not going to develop up to the same level. I think what we're seeing with activism, it's not that it's gone away, but we've sort of reached peak activism. The number of con actual contests that are run each year or nominations that are delivered, it pr falls within a fairly narrow range. When I was at ISS, we used to track how many we wrote on each year. So definitive proxy filing where there was no settlement prior to that. And it was somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 a year. But th that... That's peak activism. It's not that it's spiking up anymore. It's gotten to very large companies. It used to be rare that you would see a billion dollar market cap in the mix. But it's now kind of the background noise. And honestly, I think the ones that are the activists that are serious about it, serious about they think there's value there they can unlock, they go the route of trying to be more cooperative. This was what Value Act did for years. They're an iron fist inside of a very thin velvet glove, but they they were really effective at that kind of stuff. Carl Icahn has no interest in it. He likes punching, he likes the brawl. But everybody else who's made their bones actually is, even Dan Loeb, who was just a terror when he was in the Yahoo yeah. message boards, um, and he's, he's got no filter and he's got no conscience and he is a sadist. Uh, even Dan <laughs> Loeb is, he's very good as a hedge fund really manager too. Uh, uh, even Dan Loeb, gets resolutions behind the scenes now because it's just a much more economically efficient way of doing things. So I think activism is part of the, the landscape now, but I think it's not what it was 10 years ago. And I think the bumpetrage thing is that that's in certain parts of the economic cycle, that's just much easier to do. You don't have to worry about, is my plan really going to work out over three years? It's can I get more cash today? Can I get another dime? I think that's what it is. It's it's a little sad. I mean, we're past the heroic point in, in <laughs> activist history, and we're now down to just the settlers busting the sod out on the prairie. But uh, I, I, I think the real...
it, it's moved away from those type of people into the policies that every big institution has and then the ESG focus, which will actually get narrowed to something else. I don't mean the dumb ESG proposals. I mean the ones that they actually truly care about, um, whatever those happen to be. I think we're headed into a quieter phase, even though it's not going away. I think these guys have covered the waterfront pretty well. If you sign up a big deal, you're going to get sued. There's going to be a strike <laughs> suit, and then you've got to closely monitor the stock price looking for activists or arbitrageurs. So I think that's just part of the, the – I think that's the rule rather than the exception now.